we ever needed you. We need you now. We need you now. And if we ever needed you, we need you now. We need you now. And if we ever needed you, we need you now, we need you now, and if we ever needed you, we need you now, we need you now, for we are your people, and we're called by your name. Lord, we humble ourselves to you. Lord, and we pray oh, that you would heal land. We want you to heal the land. Lord, we need you to heal the land. you to heal the land, cause if we ever needed you, we need you now, we need you now, if we ever needed you, we need you now, we need you now, lift it up church. If we ever needed you, we need you now, we need you now. We're crying out, God. If we ever needed you, God, we need you now, we need you now, we need you now.
Lord, jump on your feet real quick. I need you to lift up your hands and your hearts to the Lord. to yet another episode on the Jesus Girl Entertainment Podcast. My name is Shani Cole Robinson and I will be your host. I would like to firstly thank every single platform that has allowed us to stream from Anchor to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pi Bay, Listen Notes, and now Amazon Music. We appreciate you all for even seeing enough in the gifting or the specialty <laughs> that this our podcast provides to even extend the offer for us to be able to stream on your platform we are grateful and i also want to thank everybody who streams in continually you guys are helping us get closer and closer to that 1000 stream mark and we are so grateful for that and so because we are in the season of lord i want to be better this is actually our last episode on this season where we were highlighting the topic of sin we're going to be talking from the topic of how to win friends and there's actually a book out about it. Um, before I go into this segment, I want to make the disclaimer that this is not based upon what's inside of that book because I actually had that book recommended to me years ago, but I never had the opportunity to really learn it or read it or purchase it. So this is not, it's a great book. I've heard great things about it and the leader that recommended it to me has read it and recommends it. I just haven't had an opportunity to read it as of yet. But the reason we're talking from this topic today is because there actually was a situation that arose on yesterday um, with somebody I know, aka my daughter. But she (laughs) she told me as to what we need to talk about. And yeah, guys, if you have children, if you're a mother or father, talk to your children. Talk to them. I talk to my children often about everything, you know, because the world is increasingly growing and sin is becoming more and more popular to the world and even some things that the government has approved that God doesn't approve so it's important for me to filter what they believe to be right by the word of God and by what God's standards are so that we can make sure we stand on track and so the topic came up about friends and you know what kind of friends to hang out with um what kind of people you know to be able to include yourself with And I don't want to be one of those moms that is, because my children are getting older now, they're becoming, I have a son that'll be a teenager this upcoming month. And I don't want to be one of those moms that's like, oh, I don't want my kids, you know, my kids can't hang out with these kind of people or whatever, because I had people to do that to me um, when I was still learning how to be a better person. Instead, I want to use that as an opportunity to help whatever friends they have to be drawn closer to God. So what was brought up is that because my children are being taught the ways of God, the word of God, and raised in a Christian home as best as I can, right? We do the best that we can, and then God does the rest, right? So it's trial and error with what I learned. (laughs) Many things I probably learned the wrong way. 
but um, just the best knowledge of truth that I have, and then God does the rest. So I plant the seed. They may have mentors that come along the way that water the seed, but it's going to be God that gives the increase. And so with this discussion about friends, it's not that you are limited in your friendships. It is important that we are surrounding ourselves with godly people because we have the same, we share the same belief system. We worship the same God. Yeah, in the, in the event that you come across, you know, a person that you have, you know, you guys just have good conversation. You may share similar passions. Just being aware that it it's easier to be, if you're not rooted in your faith, it's easier to be drawn out than it is to be drawn in. So to make sure that if I'm going to be a friend with a person that does not worship the same God that I am, that the intent is for me to use this as an evangelical moment to help them to know God the way that I do instead of it being the other way around. And so for this Soulful Soul Care Sunday, I really wanted to kind of give an idea, let people know, especially new viewers know why. Okay, so new viewers don't know this at all, but we stream twice weekly, once on Fridays for Freedom Fridays and on Sundays for Soulful Soul Care Sundays. And so I gave the reason why I do Freedom Fridays is because it's going into the weekend. For me, when I was still in the world, that was around the time that, you know, the parties was getting ready to jump off. It was going to be a lot of worldly fun taking place, maybe some illegal activity. And so to give people an opportunity to really think about what it is that they're getting ready to indulge in before they go into it and make prayerfully get people to choose godly ways to have fun. And you can have fun in godly ways. I actually was teaching youth service this morning and we were, we, I shared a, a sermon by Jacqueline Carr. She was 14 years old. And what she stated is, I'm 14 years old. I love God and I have fun. I don't know, you know, she said, I don't care what anybody says. You can have fun living this life and you can. It's just a different kind of fun. It's just um, change. It's a different kind of enthusiasm. It's a different kind of, it's just different. And so if you think about even with diet, when you change your diet, for me, I'll be transparent because on Soulful Soul Care Sundays, for those who are listening in, we just kick back. It's kind of a conversation. Freedom Fridays are more of a preach, you know, we'll take a text. But Soulful Soul Care Sundays, we just talk. And the reason I decided to do Soulful Soul Care Sundays because you're getting ready to go into the week. It's at the end of the day. And when I was first uh, in, in the beginning stage of my life, it helped that I had a mentor that was um, a woman of God that was really, really close to me that I could talk to about everything. I mean, we had an open door as it pertains to relationships, as it pertains to financial issues, as it pertains to stresses. I, I had her to bounce these kind of things off of, but as I grew on my faith, there were a lot of times that I spent alone and I didn't really have anybody to talk to about things like this. And so I believe that in me sharing, it'll help you to know that you're not alone. So when you close the door on sin, and when you close the door on that other lifestyle you were listening, you were living, we can just even, for example, and I don't want I'm not taking a text, but I'll take a biblical example, Apostle Paul. When he had that road to Damascus experience, he you gotta think about being blinded and then having Ananias to lay hands on him so that he could receive his sight. He could never go back to the life that he was living prior to him having that conversion. So he was cross, almost seemed like stuck in between two worlds. Whereas the people from my past don't receive me like that no more because they knew me to be this kind of ride or die, for lack of better words, type of person. And now I've had this encounter with Jesus and he's telling me you can't do any of that anymore. Like scratch all of that. This is a brand new start. This is what I need you to do. Go preach the gospel. But <laughs> then there's the controversy because the people that have already been preaching the gospel, the people who already have an established relationship with God, they don't really receive me like that because they know my past. And so it's like, who do I have but God? And so we're doing the Soulful Soul Care Sundays. It gives us the opportunity to know that you're not alone in that. There's a lot of people that have made that transition and felt alone. And then some people back out because it's like, I don't fit here, I don't belong. There's actually a song I'm gonna play um, following this by Todd Delaney, Todd Delaney entitled Unchurched because sometimes you kind of feel like you don't fit, but you do, you do. 
you got to go through your church experience. Some people, they're like, well, I don't, you know, I went through the da 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 You, you got to go through it because you have to, it's a process that you have to be approved. There's some good things that are going to come out of that. There are some, you know, you're going to be challenged in different areas. The mother of the church, the mothers of the church, the elders of the church, you know, it's to help you, to buffet you, to help you to become better so that when you are released to go out to evangelize, to go out and preach the gospel, now you're well equipped. You got it's certain things you just have to go through as a part of the process. And then you'll find yourself around other believers. Not to say that you're going to always agree with sister, brother, whatever. But one of the most beautiful things is that y'all believe in God. We all serve Jesus. We believe he came. He lived. He died. He rose. He's coming back back again. That's our. We all have. We all share that belief, that common ground. So we find something else to build off of. So. Um, this past, actually yesterday, and that's why I kind of sound like I'm a little tired, but I'm okay, God got me. But yesterday, we were out at a fest, and my children, all of my children were there. Um, my s- sister was with me, and we got a chance to see all of these different ethnic groups. Um, all of these, some people even came from different religious groups to come to this Christian fest that was thrown by two churches here in the Minnesota area. And it was just beautiful to see. Even at the end, the DJ put the music on, everybody was out there dancing, and some people from a different racial group, they didn't really feel like, it was a lot of people out there, but just two some, two people specifically, they kind of felt like maybe I shouldn't. And the DJ encouraged them, like, come on guys, you guys come and join us too. And it was just so beautiful to see that because I know that God was smiling down because that's the way that he wants us to be, he intends us to be. Yes, he created us differently. We have different shades, we have different sizes, we have, different hair textures we have different color eyes we we have different things about us but he created every single one of us and he loves us it's just like a mother with multiple children or a father with multiple children you love every single one of your children you love them and you hate to hear them arguing or fighting or at odds with each other if you're you know a parent that really love your children you don't want to see them into it you want to see them getting along and so that was kind of a sidebar but it was to encourage us to take opportunities to, um, there's actually a scripture that says that we should not go to odds against each other, but if you are at odds, why not suffer the wrong? So even if somebody does something wrong to you, you don't have to like try to browbeat them. You can say, you know, I was wrong in the situation and I just don't want us to be at odds. It's even a scripture that states that if you have um, your tithe or your offering, you're getting ready to lay it at the altar, leave it there. And if you have odds with your brother, leave it there. Go fix whatever you got going on with your brother or sister in Christ and then return and give your offering so that you have, you've done it with pure, you know, pure, everything is pure across the board. You don't have anything that you're harboring on the inside of you towards anyone. And that's not always easy. I actually had a young lady to reach out to me um, in regards to one of the podcasts that we presented, the one that she spoke about in particular, and I won't say her name because she, she streams in and we did have this discussion about it. And she spoke about it openly on her platform. But the podcast was entitled, There Will Be No Honor Where There Is Honor. Where, there Will Be No Honor Where There Is Dishonor. And that was a hard one for her. And I, it was a hard one for me, actually, too, because I've had, at that time that that was actually released, I was semi and at odds with almost every parent I, <laughs> I have because of different reasons, but God was ministering to me and I knew it was a message that I had to release. But after having conversation with her, she understood more and it, it was helpful for her. Now that's not to say that it, it's gonna be easy to walk that process out. Sometimes when people think about mothers and their children or fathers and their children and you see a child being disrespectful to a parent, you're like, oh, that's so out of order, but you gotta take into consideration that and it's I'm not excusing the behavior I will never excuse the behavior but not everybody is raised in a home where they're loved by their mother where they're loved by their father where they're taught basic principles where they're actually cared for so when you see this arguing you see this fighting and it's bickering between a, a mother and a child or a son and I mean a father and a son or a father and a daughter whatever the case may be Sometimes, you know, in many cases, it's warranted. And a lot of people like to use scriptures like, honor thy mother and thy father, and you should. That's God's word. You have to stand. God's word going to stand. But it also says, provoke not your children. When I sit down and I talk with my children, that's why I gave 
I talk to my children. We have these candid conversations and these open conversations. And so back to the topic of how to win friends, the first step for me, when I was in high school, I remember there was a season that I did have a lot of friends. It was actually like middle school, high school transition. And that was when I was, at the time, an amateur boxer. I was also a captain of a dance team. And I was kind of like going, like I co-captain of a team and then I became captain of a team or the co-captain of a team. So I was kind of weaving in and out of the dance world. Um, and so I was able to accumulate a lot of friends like that. But what I told my children and what I'm going to share today, because we can't just use biblical principles for the church. You got to go out into the world and you can't just like I did in the beginning of my walk, just carry a Bible around all the time and just look at everybody else like they they finna die and go to hell because you know the word of God. God didn't just, if he still have you here, he don't want you to just have what it is that he gave you for you. You gotta be able to share that with the world in ways that they can understand it, not in a, you know, brow beating way. And so at that time, um, when I was in high school and I had many, many friends between middle school and high school, outside of school, it was because I had already perfected within myself what it was that I was doing. So I had friends that were boxers, I had friends that were dancers, and that's because we shared similar beliefs and we were all working towards the same goal. So for me, and this is just my take on it, that's why I'm glad that we're going into a new season and I'll announce what the title of that season is next week where I'm gonna be having some guests on. So we can have different perspectives, but my whole take on it is, is as long as you have your relationship right with God, that he'll bring the people around you that he desires to be around you, to be in relationship with you, to be in friendship with you. And those are the only kind of people you want. Not to say that they'll be your top preference, not to say that you all will see out of everything. That's a whole nother conversation too. We can talk about defining relationships instead of destroying them, which means that just because we have a disagreement don't mean that I X out the entire friendship because we see something differently. It just may be that we don't see eye to eye when it pertains to this topic or this situation or this issue. And so that's all I have for you all for this Soulful Soul Care Sunday. I'm so excited that we made it through this week and through this season. And I just pray God's best for you as we go into this new week. We embrace our newness. We come into who it is that God has called us to be. And just like I mentioned earlier with changing your diet, doesn't mean that, mean that like when I transitioned to vegan and and when I transitioned to fully vegan, it was the best thing for my body, but not exactly what I wanted. I still craved meat. I still craved things that I used to like and eventually fell back into eating certain things that I used to eat. But I know that it's not best for me. So really buffeting my body to do what's best for me. And that's all God wants. It's his, he, he wants to give us his best. And that requires us releasing some things. Now, it's not as deep as with food. If you eat chicken, eat your chicken. There's actually scripture that say you should eat it. <laughs> it don't affect everybody. Some things, for me, and I'll be talking about this coming up, there are certain things that I've dealt with as far as, like, different uh, different things that I've dealt with that other people don't deal with. Like, when I eat certain things, I have a certain reaction. Other people won't have that reaction just because of who they are. So it's to your own self being be true, being true to yourself. And I said this previously actually on a podcast that I did from A Word From This Generation. We're bringing that back. Those people, I love those people. That's Justin, Clada, Chanel. We're bringing back another episode from A Word From This Generation. If you haven't checked it out, it's on my YouTube page. Go check it out. But one thing I said, when you're being authentically yourself, you're naturally going to draw people that are authentically themselves. And you won't have to be like put on a front. Those are the best kind of relationships that you have where you can just be yourself or you can say something random and the other person just laughs. <laughs> and it's like, you got that? <laughs> like, you know, it's just that, and it happens. It does happen. Um, throughout my life, I have dealt with different seasons of my life where I struggled with acceptance. Um, I don't think it was so much more of people accepting you know, me as it was a personal thing. So, and that that also falls in line with self-care, self-development, self-awareness, and just becoming. 
And so that's all I have for you all for this Soulful Soul Care Sunday. I pray that that was helpful as you begin to walk into the newness of yourself. To your own self, be true. Find your, your relationship with God. Make sure that that's first and foremost in the center. That's a song by Israel Houdin. Holden, entitled Jesus at the Center. And he'll make sure that everything else is in alignment and everything else works out. So I pray you all have an awesome and amazing week. Um, Enjoy your family. Enjoy your loved ones. Enjoy those that God has brought close to you. And that's all that we have. Talk to you all next week. God bless you and God keep you. Soulful Soul Care Sunday. do with this.